What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. How big is the collecting market? How big is the toy market? And as my age group starts to kind of get closer to being dead, are any of these toys going to be collected by future generations? These are all stupid questions that have been rattling around in my brain. So I decided to do some research and I thought I would share with you what I found. And some of the data is actually pretty interesting. Hopefully this is engaging and you like it. If you don't, I'm sorry, but I just thought you'd find it as fascinating as I did looking at some of the different numbers out there for toys and games, for collectors, for vintage toys. And uh, there's quite a bit of data that's actually pretty readily available. And before I begin any further, I want to say a couple of things. First, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I try to kind of mix things up occasionally. I mainly cover prices for vintage Star Wars stuff, whether it's toys or comic books, things like that. I also cover the vintage collection, which is a modern toy line. But uh, occasionally I veer off into kind of weird topics like this. And so if you're new, welcome. Please consider subscribing. And to my existing subscribers and my Patreon supporters, thanks so much for the channel support. Be sure to leave a like if you like this kind of information. So I, I decided to kind of dig in and I found a few kind of really good, interesting websites. A lot of this stuff is you have to pay for it for the full report. And they just give you just enough to kind of tease you to try to entice you to buy the reports. I didn't buy any reports, but I did find some free information that I thought was kind of interesting. So let's start off with Mordor Intelligence. They're kind of like a research group. And they did a study, apparently, that talks about the toy market and how big the toy market is. The study period is 2016 to 2021 with projections to 2026. So they're kind of taking a look at what's going to happen over the next five years as of the making of this research paper, which was last year. The fastest growing market is Asia Pacific, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I was surprised to hear that. I would have guessed Europe, but the more I thought about it, I was like, well, China is kind of a still developing country, and they're growing so much, and they're a big market, so I can see that. So I can understand why the fastest growing market is the Asia Pacific region. The largest market is North America. No surprise there. North America encompasses Canada and the U.S., and that's where the majority of toy spending is. The compound annual growth rate, CAGR, that's, that was an interesting statistic. From 2020 to 2025, they're expecting a compound annual growth rate of 9.91% in the toys and games category. Now, what does the toys and games category include? It's a little bit kind of gray in terms of what some of these articles cover in terms of the industry. So keep that in mind is that toys are one thing, games, video games, board games are another thing. So some of this data, it's kind of incorporating separate industries in my mind. I consider board games and video games to be two separate industries away from toys. But a lot of this data may incorporate those, those numbers. But no matter how you slice it, a 9.91% compound annual growth rate is pretty pretty fast for what I consider to be a fairly mature industry. Usually with mature industries, you might see 3 to 4% growth annually, but 10, close to 10% growth is, is a pretty fast-moving, fast-growing market. Uh, the toys and games market globally was valued by these guys at $261.65 billion. That's a big number. That's almost a quarter, over a quarter of a trillion dollars. And uh, again, the, the projected CAGR is about 9.91%. They also did bring up COVID and the fact that lockdowns brought in more collectors. They brought in more toy buyers as people were kind of at home. Uh, certainly electronic entertainment and electronic games, things like that, video games, all of that stuff saw massive growth. But the actual toy, the physical toys certainly did as we know if you're a collector and we've seen prices and what they've done over the last two years. So they did mention that and uh, anything else, you know, they, they did say key market trends, the influence of technology is promoting video games, big surprise there. And also, you know, technology has improved so much. Think about where we were when I was a kid, when I was in high school, we had the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo proper when I was even younger. And, and what you can now do on your phone, 
versus what required an actual entertainment console. So as technology has improved and graphics and special effects and online connectivity, all that stuff has improved over the last 20 to 30 years and has made uh, the video game industry what it is today. Uh, and so you can see how, how fast the, the growth is in the toys and games market. And as I mentioned, uh, the major factor driving the prosperity of the Asia-Pacific toys and game market is the rising preference for educational toys beyond the core skills. I argue that educational toys, while certainly are, are a factor, um, I think it's more fun games, you know, the, all the different games that my kids play, like Roblox and things like that. So, uh, but anyway, the, the China market is certainly growing. Uh, they're saying that the, the toy market volume in China saw growth of 7.8%, and uh, that's a big number. And the other interesting thing from this article is that the toy industry is fairly fragmented, meaning that there's not like one or two or three major players. And while there are major players, don't get me wrong, the major players are listed here, Mattel being the largest, followed by Lego, and then Hasbro is actually only number three, which I was surprised to see that. Takara Tommy over in Asia, and then Spin Master, which I have no idea who they are. But it shows where they kind of project global toys in, the global toys and games market, and they're saying it's fairly fragmented and that there's a lot of different players and that it's still not that consolidated relative to other industries, which I was a little bit surprised by. So anyway, just some data there. And this was another interesting website, uh, blog.hobbydb.com had an article about the collectible and vintage toys market. And, uh, you know, this MP, the MPT group, which is kind of a large uh, group that does a lot of different research, they said that in 2012, they reported that collectors, collectors, not kids, collectors bought about 15% of the total toys and models sold in retail outlets. Now, you know, so you think about that, all the toys, this is in 2012 again, I tend to think that if this if this data was updated 10 years later in 2022, that percentage is much higher. Because, you know, if you look at the vintage collection, how many kids are really buying that relative to adult collectors? I would say that it's a significant number of the vintage collection. I'm just using the vintage collection as an example or the Black Series. I would bet that that this data would be much different if it, if it was done today versus 10 years ago. Uh, they estimate the total sales at retailers for toys and models at $23 billion. And this is, again, as of 2012. But anyway, that 15% number I just thought was worth mentioning because I, I think that that number is totally different today. That, that number does not account for eBay. Uh, eBay and online channels, peer-to-peer -peer sales, things like that. And uh, they're estimating that, uh, that that number would, would, it would be substantially larger and roughly about 10% higher if you start factoring in eBay. Uh, the other interesting thing I wanted to point out is that if you look at how the market is fragmented between toys and models versus other kind of collectible spaces, the two red ones are the most important ones that I wanted to point out. They're saying that toys account for, let's call it roughly eight to $9 billion of sales, while comics account for roughly $5 billion of sales. Now, the one thing I will mention is that collector, the, the collecting community as a whole is larger for comics. I read an article recently where they estimate that just in the U.S. alone, that comic book collectors are about one and a half million people. And I think that number is, is pretty substantial. The other thing I wanted to mention is like how many of us collectors are out there? Um, and he, this guy ran some calculations. These are all kind of like back of the envelope type calculations. So take them f for what they were. But they're saying that the, he's estimating that the number of collectors worldwide are estimated to be 75 million people. That's worldwide. And in one of the reports from October 2000, they're estimated that 42.9 million households, or roughly 42% of households, report that someone in their household collects, collects something. With an average of 1.7 individual collectors living in each household, the number of U.S. collectors is estimated to be 72.9 million people, or about 
of the U.S. population. So again, that's another pretty interesting statistic, and that's for across all age groups. And so my question to you guys, you guys being Star Wars collectors, whether you collect modern or vintage, and you start to think about getting rid of your collection, is that number going to shrink as more and more kids don't really play with toys, more and more kids are stuck on their iPads and on their phones, um, and they're not as interested in action figures or comic books, hard you know, hard comic books versus digital. I, I do think it would be interesting to know what you guys think as to whether the collecting base of people will change as my generation starts to die off. I tend to think that it, I think that I tend to think that that the collecting base, US, at least in the U.S., will shrink, and probably worldwide as well. So um, whether our items that we value so much and that the market seems to value so much today are going to be worth the same kind of insane numbers 20 or 30 years from now, it's debatable. I don't know. And uh, it's, it's just kind of something fun to kind of think about. But uh, these massive numbers of collectors, I think, are, are, are pretty interesting. And the fact, going back to the comic book versus action figure collecting market, again, the, the, the number that I was quoted from a different article I read that I forgot to pull up for this video was one and a half million people in the US alone collect comic books. I don't think it's nearly that high for, for, for action figures. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe maybe my number is, is low, but I think that maybe the, the comic book market is smaller dollar wise as we saw in that chart. But uh, I, I just, I find it hard to believe that there's a million and a half people in the US still collecting action figures, especially dating back to, to the video that I made a while back trying to figure out what the the production runs are for the vintage collection, for a standard vintage collection figure based on the numbers I calculated and everyone's saying that that was too high, it's more like 10% of that. The average number I, I came up with after speaking with collectors and with people in the toy distribution business, they said that per character, it's roughly 40,000 units worldwide for certain characters, for each wave of figures. And uh, if it's that low, then certainly there's there's less than one and a half million collectors in the U.S. I would think, but uh, that's again only for the Star Wars line and for modern Star Wars line. It doesn't account for superheroes and every other kind of collectible that's out there in terms of action figures. But the other interesting article is from World Atlas. This is the seven countries that spend the most on toys, and while the U.S. has the largest share in terms of dollars spent for toys and games for just straight toys this is looking just at straight toys the numbers were pretty interesting and uh, while you would think that the US would have the highest amount spent per household on toys that's not the case the US is actually number two they're estimating that the annual amount spent in the United States is three hundred and seventy one dollars the United Kingdom comes in first at $438. Now, is the U.S. a much larger market? Of course. It's a, it's a 300 and whatever it is, 50 million people versus the United Kingdom, which is much smaller. But I thought per capita and per household, it was interesting the fact that the United Kingdom came in uh, pretty substantially higher. Uh, number three was France, four was Germany, five Russia, six Italy, and seven Spain. I, I do think it's also interesting that as a culture, Italy and Spain especially, they encourage their kids to go outside to play. And I wish that the United States encouraged our kids to go out and play more. And it's a, it's a constant struggle, at least in my household, to get my kids off of electronics and out there doing sports and, and coming up with more imaginary physical type games outside with friends. So uh, that's, that's a struggle in the current generation because of how good technology is now and how interconnected we all are. But Italy and Spain, their culture really emphasizes getting outside. And uh, it helps to have such beautiful landscapes like a lot of Italy and Spain do. But that's probably why that number is so low. And uh, I, I just think that the United States uh, as a whole, and, and me specifically with my own family, could benefit from more of that mentality and spending less on electronics and spending less time on electronics and getting outside. And uh, usually it involves me dragging my kids outside with a football or with a basketball or a tennis racket and uh, getting them to play and get some physical activity. So anyway, just some interesting stats that are out there. It's by no means all encompassing. I'll put a link to all of these articles in the video description in case you want to bore yourself silly 
looking at some of these numbers. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.